so in the last video, I believe I put Marla in with Phoebe. So Marla's in here with six other turtles. Uh, Norman's separated because he's a mean old red-eared slider. And Phoebe is separated in the front pond area because she is a female mean old red-eared slider. But Marla's grown up with the uh, six, five other turtles that are in here. So she's good with them, but I think she might need to lay eggs. So I tried to put her in with Phoebe, except like I said, Phoebe was mean, like I expected. So I immediately took her out just like a couple hours later. As soon as I saw them in the water feature together, I knew that it, it wasn't gonna work. So I set up this temporary tub for Phoebe and it has some cycled media. This is the wood from one of the 125 gallons inside that is just rotting because we found it on a forest floor and it's just uh, creating tons of malm in the 125 gallons. So it's just not going to work in a fish tank. I'll probably leave it in the front turtle area because uh, there's a there's a bunch of, uh, I'll show you in a second, there's a bunch of random pieces of wood around there. But it has a just a random filter and water. And I put the water just from here and then some new water too and that type of thing. So I want to show you the, the size comparison between Marla and Phoebe. And unfortunately, I brought in a bunch of duckweed from one of the inside aquariums into here today. So it's hard to see the turtles, but we'll get them both out. So let's go get Phoebe. Here you can see we got uh, privacy vents recently. So we had, we had that. I, my brother put it in. So that's nice. And it's way better than our old crappy chain link fence. And now if a turtle gets out of my system somehow, I bet it couldn't leave the yard even. Uh, but also I can let out the chickens sometimes if I want to. Except our dog is a pointer mix and he might go after them. So we can't really have them out at the same time. So I'll probably leave the chickens in here in their, their big enclosure. So. So here's the front turtle area. It really fills in during the summertime. And there is Phoebe, large female rider slider. She's in here uh, all year round in Ohio. So she, uh, it doesn't really freeze over. If it does, then that's always flowing. So there's always oxygen exchange and she just brewmates during the winter and it, it works out quite well. And then she can get up and bask and she explores sometimes, but I don't think she has any eggs and she hasn't mated with anyone. Marla has unfortunately mated with Lewis. So I know that that's already a thing. So I want to get her out here so she can try to lay eggs if she can. And I know even though Marla is about half the size of Phoebe, I don't think she can get out of this, our, our, state-of-the-art fence here uh, because the cracks aren't big enough. There's also a bunch of frogs that live out here. You can see one right there behind the plant, but there's a the couple of the northern green frogs in here. And then the other day I saw a tree frog in the hosta leaves, which was pretty cool. It was just like sitting, sitting right there. So I haven't heard any tree frogs call to my knowledge, but I always like when they do because they like to hang out around my water features sometimes. I haven't seen the one out back. Generally, there's one out back that hangs out near my water feature during the day, and then at night it goes and eats the bugs around the, the kitchen window. But here you can see the creeping Jenny is flowering. So it has those nice yellow flowers. And nothing else is flowering in here yet. But first it'll probably be the day lilies, and then it'll be ho the hostas. You can see the day lilies are sending out their things. And then you can tell this one's a different one because it sends out its, this, this small plant is the small day lily. It's on a different schedule than everyone else. It's just a different kind. So it comes out a little bit earlier. Here you can see all the, the creeping Jenny flowers. And then just lots of plants. I've been getting more into plants this year. So, uh, I like to know what everything is like, like that is uh, Virginia creeper right there. 
which goes around here, which is harmless. Like, I kind of thought it might be dangerous, like poison ivy, but it's not. And then my nephew wanted to, to get into herbs, so I have some oregano, and that is some thyme. And then whatever this is, I thought, like, this is a huge, I think, like, a fire bush or something. I don't know. And then there was this thing growing under it, and I kind of thought it was just a smaller fire bush, but it's not. The, the leaves are very different, and it has flowers, and I have no idea what it is. But it's kind of bush-like, and it grows underneath, and that's kind of cool. So anyway, let's grab Phoebe out if I can. There's also cactuses in here. These, are, these cactuses grow year-round uh, out here in Ohio, which is really cool. And that's kind of why I keep them around because I just think it's cool. And also, she walks over this one like all the time and that one back there, that cactus pad. So these are just prickly pears. She walks over them and she's fine. So I don't worry about it, but that's why I leave them in here. And that's why I plant them in here because I figured it would be fine. So let's see if she'll let me grab her. There we go. She's really big. Uh, as you can see, she's pretty big. She's old. She's probably like 15 or something. I don't know. That's That would be my guess. I don't know how old she was when I got her. But definitely over 10. We'll come back out. So she's pretty big, but... Her shell was like this when I got her. Uh, all my turtles are taken in from people who don't want them anymore, so that's why I generally don't know how old they are. But I do know that she's significantly older than Marla, and she's about twice the size. So I'll set her down real quick. And then I have the difficult task of trying to obtain Marla. You can see I have lots of goldfish in here and lots of turtles. Almost all of them are native species or species that can survive in this climate year-round, except the Pink Valley Side Neck. But only the goldfish live in this stock tank year-round because it freezes, since it's, you know, not above ground, it freezes a couple inches thick, like quite a few inches thick, enough that I can stand on top of it and have to use a pickaxe to get into it. But because oxygen exchange is always happening with this filter, I don't have to worry about the goldfish, like they're fine. Okay, I'm gonna, there's Lewis. Hi Lewis. <laughs> Why'd you have to mate with Marla? You're not even the same species. This is a western painted turtle, his name's Lewis. He's the nicest turtle. But I found them mating and then I found Marla trying to get out and explore. So I kind of figure maybe she has eggs. But she's only a couple years old. I've actually raised her since she was like yay big. Uh, again, just somebody didn't want her anymore, so I took her in. And there's actually a small male radar slider in here too, like appropriately sized because it's a male. So I don't know if they've mated, but it's a, it's a strong possibility. It's not that I want to re get them to reproduce. It's just that I want her to lay eggs so she doesn't get egg bound. Okay, so here's Marla. You can see she's a little bit prettier because she's younger. And here they both are at the same time. So you can see the size comparison. Uh, Phoebe's quite a bit bigger. I think Marla, the last time I weighed her, she weighed like 25 ounces and Phoebe generally weighs like 40 to 44 ounces, so. You can see this is more like what the shell is supposed to look like. This is what it looks like when you kind of screw up diet and UVB. Uh, so this is the one I raised from being small, and this is the one I got like this. <laughs> but this coloration and stuff is really good because she gets UVB year-round, and... The, the other turtles would do a lot better if they could be outside year-round, and that is the eventual goal. Wrong turtle. So, let's take Phoebe. I'm almost certain that she will get out of this uh, little thing. Like, she'll climb out this way or that way or any way. I don't know. She's an escape artist, but 
that's fine. Like, this area, she can't really get out of. I just have a bunch of random stuff. I've been, like I said, I've been trying to get into plants, or I'm, I was already into plants. I've always been into plants, but I'm trying to get more, like, explore trees and stuff. So we have, like, a mulberry, and then, like, those are oaks. And I think that's a decorative pair, but I'm not sure. And this is, I think, one of the fire bushes. Like, that's, like, an actual sapling that I found. And that's a pawpaw tree, and I have no idea what this is. And those are bamboo. Uh, this is, these are small daylilies. These are daylilies. Uh, mint. I have more mint back there. Jeez. An oak tree. Uh... Honey locusts. These are raspberry. And then some hosta splits. I split the hostas. And then that's more daylilies. As you can see, a lot are not doing well. That's because all of them have been potted and put here this year, except this one. I don't know why it's dying up here. I don't know. But it's doing fine down there and it'll come back. So a lot of the times. I'll get plants, and at this point, I understand that if they don't do well right away, then if they're perennials, then they can get a good root structure this year and then come back way better next year, because that's how everything's worked in the, the front turtle area over the last couple of years in planting things. So I kind of learned that now. So even though a lot of stuff looks trashy like this year, like all of this, that's because I it, it's they were a bunch that somebody pulled out, and I was like, hey, can I have those? Because... You know, I want daylilies. Even they were like, yeah, sure, I don't know if they'll live. But I know that you can plant half-dead daylilies and, like, they'll live. So, uh, like, so they were bare root, and that's why they're still growing down at the base, but they uh, are not doing so well up here, and I should probably cut off all this dead stuff. But anyway, turtles. So let's get Marla. Let's go take her. And then she can have the front turtle area to herself, and she can wander around and try to lay eggs if she wants to. There she goes. So she can live out here with the frogs, and during the winter, like, I don't feed this pond, but... I do during the summer, just like I do with the stock tank. And I know it doesn't look great. I did try to do things when I built it, and not, not all of them worked. Like, there's exposed stuff that makes it look trashy or whatever. But the plants look good, and I like that. And then it's very functional, so the frogs like it, and the turtles like it, and it works for that. So in the future, I would like to build bigger, better prawns that actually look nice around the edge and everything. But in theory, we're supposed to move. So there's not a lot of reason for me to try to do that with this pond if I'm just gonna rip it out when we move. So that's part of the reason why I've been trying to get more into potted plants is because I have all these plants that I, I really like and I want to bring some of them with me, so to speak. So I've been splitting a lot of them, and then I'll just throw them in pots. And now it's my job to try to get them to survive during the winter, when winter comes, which will be kind of an experiment. Like, I don't know if any of these trees will leave, live in pots over the winter, but I'm going to try to protect them and just see what happens next year. So that's kind of the goal right now. I don't know where Marla went, but she's in there. And hopefully she can lay her eggs now. Oh, so I feel like I should disclose that this is not a permanent setup for a turtle of this size. She's just in here because she can't be in with these guys because she will attack them. So she's just in here temporarily. I'll let Marla experience the, the big area for a couple days or whatever. See if she tries to lay eggs. And if she does, then I'll move her back. Or if she just doesn't ever leave the pond, then I'll move her back and I'll move Phoebe back. So that's, this is not a permanent setup at all. It's just a very temporary one for however long it takes Marla to figure out what she wants to do. Okay, that's it. Bye.